All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're ready to go here with our session. I uh, just introduced myself. My name is Mark Name. I'm the chief architect of the IBM Watson Embed organization. And I have my colleague here, Logan Patino, who is a software developer. And he actually is one of the guys that worked on one of the things we are going to show you today, which is pretty cool. Uh, before we even get started with our session, um, typical disclaimer, informational session, doesn't create any sort of warranty or anything like that based on what me and Logan will be discussing. Uh, so what will we be discussing today? So we're going to talk about the great IBM and Salesforce partnership, Watson and Einstein you know, teaming up together. I'm going to take you guys through a little bit about the Watson and Cloud Platform to make sure everybody's uh, on the same page and clear on it. We've gotten a lot of questions, a lot of great questions so far. Just a, a show of hands here. Who's actually used Watson before in the IBM Cloud, logged in? Mark, of course. <laughs> OK, who knows what Watson is? All right, very good. OK, OK, excellent, good to see. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Watson and Einstein as well. And we're also going to talk about something that Mark Benioff tweeted and we unveiled yesterday, which was the new IBM Watson Salesforce SDK, uh, which allows developers to more easily integrate Watson in their application. So we're going to do a little demo towards the tail end. Just to let you all know as well, we have you know, a short time frame here. Logan and myself will also be right over here to my left where this coffee station is. We have a, a Watson lab there. We'll be hanging out for anyone who wants to look more at the SDK or talk about anything that is Watson. So feel free uh, to come over there and, and talk to us about that. So first and foremost, the IBM and Salesforce partnership that was announced earlier this year, uh, bringing together kind of the best of both worlds. Salesforce wanted to bring the power of Watson uh, to the Salesforce platform and to Einstein. We're going to talk about how Watson uh, can complement Einstein. And if you listen to the former First Lady Michelle Obama uh, this morning, uh, she said something that was really interesting. She said, taking on her post-First Lady role is something new and she had never done. And she's trying to figure out still how she's, where she's going to leverage herself, uh, leverage herself based on her relationships, her connections, to see where she could be most effective. And the key thing she said was, I want to make sure I'm not uh, duplicating or coinciding with existing efforts, but I want to see how I can focus to complement those efforts. That's exactly what we're doing here with Watson and Einstein. We want Watson to complement Einstein and do you know, the things that Einstein perhaps can't do or needs, which we're going to talk about. Uh, we can go to the next. So first of all, what is Watson? Most of you seem to have known already what Watson is. Um, just to give you a, a, you know, a quick perspective, folks, 2005 timeframe is when the Watson idea was discussed as a concept. After six years of planning, development, research, 2011, fast forward six years later, everyone's probably heard about the big Jeopardy game. We had Alex Trebek. We had a game just for IBM. And we put Watson up against two of the most winningest contestants uh, in Jeopardy history. And Watson definitively won that competition. That's when we knew what we had, the validation of what we had was something special. So you'll hear about uh, things about insights, right? That's the thing that everyone talks about now, insights. I like to think of intelligence. Watson brings intelligence. Watson brings value to the table, to your businesses. So all this data living out there today as data is increasing year in, year out, all that data, structured and unstructured data, is something Watson can consume. So we're going to talk about exactly what that means. But Watson, that Watson that won Jeopardy in 2011, three years later, we formed the IBM Watson Group within IBM. First time a new group and division has been formed in about 20 years at that time. So that's 2014. We deployed Watson in various different countries, more countries than anybody has done in the AI space. We've worked with more customers across industries, whether it's finance, banking, automotive, insurance, oil and gas, education. We've done it. So you hear a lot about you know, AI, technology, the art of the possible. We've done that. We've done that with Watson. It all started with that Watson engagement advisor concept that won Jeopardy for us. Fast forward now to 2017, and we now have the Watson platform. We have the most comprehensive AI platform in the world. We've got more experience deploying Watson with customers than anybody. We are the premier AI platform. That's why Salesforce chose to partner with us. 
if you look at all the different uh, services we have that make up the platform, just to hit on a few of them, we have the speech, sector, speech section of the Watson platform, so speech to text, doing transcribing on either existing files or live, uh, live audio streaming. We can translate that. We can, uh, we can create you know, omni-channel experiences, mobile apps, what have you. We've done it. We have the vision section, right? Watson sees visual recognition. Our visual recognition service has significantly, significantly, continuously improved uh, over time. Language, so natural language classification, understanding what your customers are talking about. What's the intent of what maybe they'll be asking or what an entire paragraph actually means. Language translation, the ability to translate in multiple languages using different out-of-the-box models that we have. Uh, discovery, I'm going to save because I'm going to talk about that in just a minute in, in depth. Uh, we have other capabilities like natural language understanding. Not just understanding the intent of what's being asked, but breaking that down into the intents, uh, entities, concepts, keywords, relations, etc. And giving you guys the ability, using Watson Knowledge Studio, to customize to customize Watson to your specific need, industry or need. So for example, if you want to identify specific compliance issues in a bunch of text you have, and your company has specific nomenclature or reasons of why a compliance has been violated, you can train Watson to do that. Tone analyzer, personality insights. Tone analyzer, understanding the, the user's emotion. Personality insights, you can profile your customers. You can scrub their, their Twitter data. We have an app that does that, a demo app. Understanding your customer. What do they want to buy? Understanding the personality of a user. Who's the best customer service agent I should get this person and transfer it to? This is, folks, the Watson platform. Watson platform is a part of IBM's larger platform, which is the IBM Watson and Cloud platform. So at the bottom here, we have the cloud platform. Uh, we provide you the infrastructure the development services to build, deploy, host, and run your applications in the IBM cloud. We provide that to you. Formerly called IBM Bluemix, now it's called IBM Cloud. Couldn't keep it, uh, couldn't keep it simpler than that. We have a, a data and analytics platform on the IBM cloud, things like a data science experience. So you have data scientists who want to generate their own machine learning models with our machine learning service. We have that. We have many, many many different offerings in our data and analytics uh, platform. AI, that's Watson. That's exactly what we just talked about. But we have another layer as well. We have an application layer. These different applications we've created using our core Watson platform, our AI platform, things like Watson Media with the IBM Watson Video Enrichment Service. This gives you the capability to upload a video and have Watson tell you exactly what that video is about, what's being discussed, bringing it up into different scenes and segments using things like our visual recognition and speech to text. We have our IBM talent, uh, Watson talent offerings, things like IBM Career Coach or Candidate Assist. This is applicable to any organization that has employees. If an employee wants to find another job, wants to get on a career path, we have pre trained frameworks and models that can do that today in our Watson talent group. Watson Virtual Agent. This is basically our Watson conversation service uh, that is pre-trained in different industries to give you a big head start on your specific industry, whether it's banking, insurance, etc. So this is our IBM Watson and Cloud platform. So I want to focus now for a second on IBM Watson Discovery, our discovery service, because this is really key and has a lot to do with our Salesforce partnership. So what is discovery? So it's a cloud-based service. It's cognitive search, but it's, it's so, so much more. There are many, many capabilities. The idea you will hear, the concept you'll hear is, let me load all my unstructured data. Take all my Word documents, PDF documents, HTML, or maybe even raw JSON. Let me just throw it into Watson Discovery, and poof, out come a bunch of insights from Discovery. Let me step you through that really briefly for a sec. Um, just back, back up. Uh, so we have an automated data ingestion. Again, you take your documents, you load them in. Watson will automatically take those documents, ingest, and enrich those documents. It will analyze those documents to better understand what are the contents of those documents, detecting things like entities. 
uh, we have a, a simplified query language. So two different ways you can query Watson Discovery. We have a discovery query language where you can hone in and look on specific different things. Like uh, we're going to do a little quick demo at the end to show you, you know, what that is. If I want to look for something about Dreamforce, I want to see the latest articles about IBM Watson. I want to look for those compliance issues we talked about earlier. We have an entire discovery query language that does that. We also have the natural query language. So if I have a, a conversational solution, uh, I'm able to ask a, a natural language query, and Watson brings back uh, the most relevant response to that query. So we do that with things like natural language processing, understanding the intent of your question, what that really means. But just as important, we have semantic search. So not just understanding what your question is, but actually trying to make sense and understand, is this answer the most relevant answer? We use different techniques, things like word embedding, to do that. You really want to take discovery to its limits, you do something that's called relevancy training, where you actually train Watson on, here is my domain, here is my specific business, here is what's right and what's wrong. Give a little sample, Watson learns from that on his own and can take it from there. Passage retrieval, maybe you have some answers that are buried in, in three paragraphs. And let's say you've got a conversational solution. Well, you don't want to display three paragraphs in a, you know, in a chat solution, right? Just, it's not a good experience. Maybe your actual answer that addresses the question is the third sentence in the second paragraph. Our passage retrieval will highlight that automatically for you. So very, very powerful service. And there's two main patterns with the discovery service. There's the insights pattern. I like to call voice of the customer. You would collect data from various data sources, social data, forum data, um, customer reviews, surveys, you name it. Whatever data you've got, you provide that into Discovery. Discovery is able to extract right, the voice of the customer. What are my customers saying about my brand? If I'm a brand manager, I want to know, how's my product doing? How's my brand doing? What are customers saying across different channels? Discovery has the capability to bring that to you avoiding hours, hundreds of hours, maybe thousands of hours of someone manually sifting through that stuff. That's the, the insights pattern. We have the document discovery pattern, which the best way to describe this is if I have a conversational solution and I have a, a front end chatbot, discovery is the, the back end of that doing all the, the digging through those documents to try and find the answer to your question. Imagine you've got company manuals, knowledge base articles, hundreds and thousands of them, right? Every customer I've talked to since 2014 has the same problem in a, in a call center scenario, for example. They spend a lot of time training employees, they spend a lot of time giving them resources, but the employees just, it's overwhelming and there's too many systems to access. Discovery simplifies that. So the first thing I want to talk about with Watson and Einstein um, is, is how they can complement each other. Here's one example. We just talked about that uh, chatbot use case. So we can use the new Einstein chatbot, sort of the front end. Einstein knows about your Salesforce, Salesforce data, CRM data. Einstein knows your customer. Where Watson Discovery comes into play is Watson Discovery can bring in all the information outside of that, non-CRM data, other enterprise data, even CRM data. You can actually load that in there as well, and Discovery can give you an overall view of, of comprehensive view of your, uh, of your data. So that's how one good example of how Discovery and Watson can complement um, Einstein. And, and, and how does Einstein hand off to Watson? Various different ways. It could be set to a confidence threshold. If the Einstein chatbot is you know, maybe 20% confident, we don't want to return that response to the end user. Let's, let's hand it off to Discovery and see what Discovery tells us. Uh, maybe it's pattern based. If Einstein chatbot is not understanding the question two times in a row, you don't just want to keep returning to the customer, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You want to be able to give them an optimized that experience, hand it off to Discovery. A lot of these practices I'm talking about is also the value of IBM Watson and our platform. It's not just the technology, it's the experience, the research, the services. Again, we've done it. There's a lot more to things like a chatbot than just here's how to create a dialogue. You want to optimize the experience, things like tone and personality. You can extend your conversational solution, this Weinstein and Watson and Einstein solution, things like tone analyzer, throwing tone analyzer on the front end, understanding your customer, if it's a customer chat, for example, and they're frustrated. Tone analyzer can uh, capture that and can respond accordingly based on the tone, give a different response. 
personality insights, you can generate a profile, I talked about this earlier, on your customer or end user and respond accordingly. And also speech to text, omni-channel. I can throw speech to text in the front end of it and um, incorporate that into the solution. So let's just go through. I don't want to. Yeah. We're gonna just going to skip a little bit here, right here. So I'm gonna, I had a few more use cases I want to show you. We're running short on time. So I want to jump to um, one of the, the big announcements we're proud to announce is the Watson Salesforce SDK. Uh, this helps developers integrate all the things I just talked about into your Salesforce applications in a much more easily easel fashion that uh, Logan is going to go ahead and talk about. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mark. So uh, like you mentioned, I was one of the development uh, engineers on the Salesforce SDK team. I'm really excited to show you guys this. So uh, to start off here, this is just kind of, uh, this is in the IBM Cloud platform. Um, this is Discovery. This has your collections. Each one of these holds the documents that Mark mentioned that you can then query, grab some insights from. Uh, so this is just kind of like the starting point of where we're at here. And I'm going to dive right into the code. So here, right here is all the code to make a simple API call with the Salesforce SDK. So it seems like a lot of you maybe haven't used Watson before, maybe haven't tried to integrate it into Salesforce. But if you have, you know that there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, and we could show you that. I mean, this is all part of the Salesforce SDK. This is all open source. You can take a look at it. Lots of things that we've handled, handled uploading files, handled dealing with all the JSON, handled sending the requests, dealing with HTTP. All that stuff is handled for you. Um, just to, to understand the value of what Logan's showing you right here, what we've created is Instead of writing hundreds of lines of code to execute an API call, he's doing it where he's showing you right here in, in about five lines. That significant, significantly speeds up uh, developer time, which allows them to focus on the product and the quality of the application versus having to go through hoops to try and get Watson uh, integrated. Yeah, so I'm just going to give you just a quick API call here. This is an API call to list the collections that I showed you earlier. So you can see up here is where all we have to do to instantiate the service and our code. Um, this gives us our discovery reference. It uses name credentials in Salesforce. So we already have the username and password stored in Salesforce. It's very secure. This is actually making the, setting up the models here. So we follow a really uh, simple, consistent pattern across the SDK and across our other SDKs, if you're familiar with developing with other languages in Watson. Um, we create an options thing. We set up some builder things. We have our environment here, which is where our collections sit. We build that. We call the list collections. And here we're going to print it out. So I'm going to just demonstrate that for you really fast. And all the objects in the Salesforce SDK uh, print out by default as JSON. So it's really easy as a developer to be able to debug, understand what's coming back. And we can see that right here. So we can see our collections. We get all the data about it. Um, and if we go back to our collections over here, we can see that the names match up with our test collection, our Dreamforce collection. And we've got that here. So we can do some more advanced things here. Um, we have another sample. This is doing the querying that Mark was talking about. So again, it's going to look very similar, and that's supposed to be consistent and really easy to be able to pick this up and be able to do a lot of different things with it in a short time. So here we're setting up, we have this discovery news collection. This is pre-built. This is something that comes with every discovery instance. Has millions and millions of articles that's generated every single day. Um, just current news. And so here we're just going to go ahead and search. This is using the natural language query, so you don't have to use our discovery language if you don't want to. You can just say search for things about Mark Benioff. And we can again run this. And right here, after this finishes running, you can see we're getting all this information. And this is all up to date. These are our discovery news. We can parse this. We can see we've got the author of these articles, some scores that come back for confidence scores, and things like that. And one more big point about this SDK is, by default, obviously, everything's coming back as JSON. And then if you're a developer and you want to handle this and use it and plug it into other apps, you're going to have to handle that yourself. You're going to have to parse it. We've done all the hard work for you. So this is just a quick modification. Um, we have models set up to handle every request object, every response object. It can be dealt with in an object-oriented manner. So right here, we have our response object that we're printing out down here in JSON. But now we're going to deal with it just like an object. We're going to get the results on it, just with the getter. We're going to iterate over those results. We're going to get the IDs. Like I said, this is, this is very easy. This is accessible for every developer. Let me take a look at that here. And there you go. There, we got all the IDs of the thing we did last. We didn't have to do any messy JSON parsing. We handled all of that for you, make it extremely easy to integrate Watson into your apps. Yep, so we've got about five seconds left. So uh, we will be right here to the left-hand side, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everyone got some value out of this. We're happy to talk about anything IBM Watson, any questions. If we had more time, we'd take the questions here. I'm happy to take the questions right over here to the left. So.
That's it. Thank for you us. very much. Thank you.